Connecticut had in his life, our lives, we'd be here all weekend. But let's start at the very beginning. I'd like to invite Buck Buckwald to the stage. lifelong friend and very first employee. In 1952, Buck joined a fledgling firm called Harold Burson Public Relations and remained at Harold's side for more than 40 years at Burson Marcella, for much of that time as vice chairman. In his book, The Business of Persuasion, Harold said Buck was the person largely responsible for Burson Marcella's long-term reputation and high performance results and high professional standards. I'm, I'm sad today. I saw Harold last when he had a gathering in his apartment before he left for Memphis. I never could understand how he could go to Memphis from New York, but <laughs> he had his reasons. But I said to myself, when he has his 100th birthday, I'm going to give him a famous old Jewish blessing, which is the Zehindut and Sonsik, which freely translated means you should only live for 120 years. <laughs> Unfortunately, fate felt otherwise. But I guess Harold and I share the same birth month. I was born on February 5th, he was born on February 20th. And I owe February 15th. <laughs> <coughs> well, he is, he was uh, three years older than I was. And I always, I always felt that, you know, he was part of the scene. How could there be a world out with Harold? He's always there. And so his not being there uh, hurt. Harold and I ran kind of parallel lives. He graduated high school at 50. I graduated at 60. He went into the Army at 43. I went into the Army at 44. We were both discharged in, I think it was around 46. Harold came to New York and started his own firm, and I, not knowing any better, went to a PR firm too that specialized in business to business stuff. My background was in engineering. I became a member of the Industrial Publicity Club. And I met a young lady named Betty Burson, who also belonged, and we got to know each other. And one day she said to me, Buck, you know, uh, my, my husband and I run this business. We need more help. Could you recommend somebody? And I said, sure, me. <laughs> and so I left what was then a prestigious large PR firm to, to join Harold and his wife. And it wasn't until 43 years later that, that I retired. And they were great years, great years. You, it, it is a wonderful thing to be with a company during its greatest dynamic period. When it wins business, when it adds people, when it grows. The years, the 70s, the 80s, and 90s, were just great. And all the people who had the good fortune of being at Burson Marcel during that period will, I'm sure, never forget it. You know, when I, when I was asked to participate in the program, <laughs> and I said to my partner, and that's true for the next PM, why? I mean, he's written two books, great opens, big articles. Everybody knows how great Harold is. 
So what are we gonna have the thing for? <laughs> and she said, stupid. <laughs> it's because we want to celebrate what Harold meant to us. And that is, that is really true. Because Harold's greatest joy, and I know this, I've had to be with him at, at lunches, was the company. One of the things on the, on the slides was his belief in people. And that was absolutely true. Harold was very certain about himself, who he was, how good he was. He didn't have to expend energy tramping on others to say, to show how great a guy he was. They, they, they tell the apocryphal story of Harold that when, when, when somebody was going to be fired, and the guy went to see Harold in separation to him, he came out feeling he was promoted. <laughs> I mean, Harold was just a nice guy. In his dealings with employees, his fellow participants in the building of Bursa Marsala, as well as with clients. One of, the, one of the exciting things about that period I talked about was our growth. And a great deal, of course, is, is due to Harold because he had wonderful contacts. People just liked him. But Harold was also shrewd in that he built a company of people who were competent. He always felt that in addition to some, some skills in the public relations field, it would be desirable to have, as he called it, a double dome, knowledge about science, technology, economics, medicine, law, what have you. We had an amazing assortment of, of bur bursting people. Some were really crazy, but they were very creative. <laughs> they were very creative. <laughs> and then we had <laughs> we really, really had also some really you know, top flight people who came to us from other from other professions, other industries, other companies because they were looking for something that they couldn't find where they were. And they found it within the Bursa environment. One of the great experiences is always the new business pitch. <laughs> Trying to get a new client. We, we were worked around the clock developing the, the thought, the structure of the presentation. Nobody complained. On the contrary, if you were invited to one of these affairs, you were pissed off. I'm a person person too. How come I'm not there? That's a great company. We were roughly two or three people in 1952. 30 years later, in this very building, we had a big blowout to celebrate the fact that Bursa Marcella, in terms of headcount, in terms of budget size, and certainly in terms of quality of the work, we were number one. And you know, they, the old cliche about nice guys finish, finish last, well, the Harold finished first. Those were, those were the days, my friends. I hope they never end. <laughs>